Don Lebatard. Is there any job in sports scarier than kick returner? I would put hockey goalie in the conversation. There's that a sports lot. crazy, man. It is crazy. They're, they're skating on crazy. knives. Uh, that's right. They have let's, let's talk about hands. this. You're absolutely right. Let's talk about this for a second. Stugats. We're going to look back in 100 years and be like, what the hell were we doing with hockey? They were skating on swords. And every once in a while, a guy got cut near the jugular. We're out here upset that they're fighting in between. Are you kidding me? Right. Fight is no. a, vi- it's a vacation. You it's a be, tropical right. vacation. You should be thankful that they're not using those swords they're skating on. This is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. If you missed any of the show, you can listen to all three hours of the Dan Lepitard Show on demand in the ESPN app, plus our Miami Miami only hour that airs before the show. And now you can subscribe to our best of podcasts. It's all available in the listen tab of the ESPN app. Catch me and Mike Gola Jr. every Sunday for weekend observations, 7 to 9 a.m. Eastern on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. I cannot explain to you what a profound waste of time it was waiting for Mike to do the impromptu production on merging the sound of defiant Brent Musburger with Minnesota winter. It was a waste of everyone's time. Uh, Disney paid us to wait around for that. Second down and nine. We, why did we have to wait for that? Why was that so hard to put together? You couldn't find a clean, blissery winner that a coach right. wasn't talking over. Right. You can barely tell the loop that I made, right? <laughs> Second down and nine. <laughs> and how did I fill the time while we were waiting by <laughs> blasting poor Charlie? Yeah. <laughs> it is. That was total filibustering. That was that was the Stugats unchained as a filibuster. That's what happened right there. Um We're so bad at this. Man. On the day that ESPN celebrating 25 <laughs> glorious years on ESPN Look Radio. at what you birthed, ESPN Radio. After 25 years, this is the thing that's getting popular right here. Keith Oberman, lead us into 25 years and birth this. Second down and nine. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary, ESPN Radio. We are christening 25 years. We are uh, the Caddyshack movie, you know, Ted Knight hitting the boat with a bottle and the boat breaking. That's what's happening right here. Like, you guys gave us this power. Second down and nine. Wow, what a horrible idea. <laughs> Blaming Charlie. I mean, nobody knows what the hell we're talking about. You know how few people know who we're even talking about? After a segment in which I'm sitting there with disease control, flipping back and forth, family feud. Man, that's really funny and great to the people who love this show and listen to every minute of it. And the rest of you are so lost right now. <laughs> Um, I thought something interesting that happened while we were off. Uh, Ronda Rousey gets paid $3 million to get embarrassed. And Clay Travis of Fox, who really wanted Ronda Rousey to fight Floyd Mayweather at one point, uh, called her uh, a fraud and a bunch of different things. And the media does this. When we're shown to be wrong on something, then we lash out instead of just sort of saying that we were wrong. Calls Ronda Rousey a fraud. And she's not a fraud. What she is is someone who can't fight and shouldn't be fighting standing up. She needs to get you to the ground. It's why it's called mixed martial arts. You are having different styles where people have strengths and you have weaknesses. And if Ronda Rousey had gotten that fight to the ground, she would have probably won. Maybe she would have won. But as it was, she can't fight standing up. So when she lost to Holly Holm, she lost to a boxer. She simply lost to a boxer that she couldn't get to the ground. And this last time, um, she lost to somebody who was just striking the hell out of her face while her trainer yelled at her, move your head, move your head. And the only time her head moved is when it was getting punched. Nunes has made a lot of good fighters so far look like that. Yeah. And, And what it's going to do, and this is what's interesting to me about this, is It's going to ruin the women's side of that sport. 
because Ronda Rousey was profiting off of our sexism. And she could fight and was beautiful. And so she was the division. And it's why she got paid $3 million. And this is what's interesting that's happened in mixed martial arts. You could say for a while she was the sport, not just the division, well, right? No, well, no, because Conor McGregor is also a transcendent star. But here's the differences between their stardoms that has been interesting. By losing, McGregor is such a draw that he did not fall by losing. He lifted Diaz. Ronda Rousey falls, everyone falls. Everyone on the women, there is not going to be another woman headlining uh, a mixed martial art event because absolutely her beauty was part of her action star appeal. You don't even think if Nunes continues to run through the division like the way that she has so far Mike, in a, I think, in a I rousy think, like I think men, the men are the chief demographic in that sport. And if men are going to want to watch women fight, men want the women to be beautiful. Holly Holm could have become a star after beating Ronda Rousey. She did not. And by the way, I think Holly Holm is beautiful. But we're talking about something here that is really hard to quantify. And I think if you have a beautiful champion in that sport, like Ronda Rousey, you cannot tell me if Ronda Rousey was all the same things but was not nice to look at, that she would have been the same kind of popular with Hollywood, with commercials, with everything else. And... And it's why Cyborg, Cy, you think Cyborg is not famous because of the steroids and the cheating? Or do you think Cyborg is not famous because she looks kind of like a man? Cyborg is famous uh, because of her menace and the looks are tied into the menace. Um, Nunes could become that sort of menace. No, but why do you think like Cyborg, Cyborg is not a star? There's a big language barrier, too. Uh, that's important. But yes, the looks, we but, saw with Gina Carano with a fledgling yes, promotion, yes. became an uh, like a superstar almost overnight like it's and Rousey's the same way but uh we've never actually seen like the dominant champion be like the menace cyborg to a, a degree but you never had the person the rousey the beautiful uh cross multi-platform superstar be the underdog and i think it's probably better positioned um in that role and we haven't seen it yet so i think it can reach that same heights if there's a superstar that's like rousey as an underdog if cyborg is viewed as more if she's more physically attractive is she a bigger star for sure that's it. Yeah, I that's mean, it. that's that's, that's the sad you, state of affairs it, right now. But yeah. I'm, I'm saying, what I am saying is Ronda Rousey losing like that, and it looks like she's been exposed, but I don't think she's been exposed. She's never been good at fighting standing up. She wins fights because she takes them to the ground, and she arm bars you. But it's why, to me, it's why I like the mixed martial arts so much is because it is styles being tested. Where is your strength? Where is your weakness? And... She can't fight standing up and not against women who can box. Nunez is going to be a bigger star than Cyborg because language barrier isn't as much. She's, I think she's the first openly gay uh, mixed martial arts champion. Well, hold on a second. Doesn't you, do I have this right? Because help me on my facts here, please. I'm already going to get out here and be reckless. Nunez, it's not just that she's gay. She's dating another fighter. Doesn't she have domestic abuse issues in her home because she's dating another fighter and the police are being called to their house because she's fighting another fighter who she's also dating? I'm I'm being a little bit reckless here because I don't know if I have my facts straight. We're going to wait here until we find out whether my facts are straight or not, or perhaps you can just play that wintry sound with Brent Musburger and we can go to break as I sweat. Second down and nine. You're listening to the Sweaty Dan Levatar Show on ESPN Radio.